Hey guys, AJ here. Today I want to talk about how to build Kirti, but since I haven't covered the basics on this channel so far, I'll sadly have to do that first so that we're all on the same page. If you say that you listened to the same story for about 10 times already, feel free to skip ahead. Timestamps are in the description. Here's what you need to know about gearing in general. The most important stat for any unit that wants to deal damage is attack. Why? Because everything your unit puts out as damage scales with this one attack stat. Other games distinguish between physical attack and magical attack, for example, but we don't have that here. Both your normal attacks and your elemental attacks require just this one stat. There are units like Noel who scale with defense or Barbara who scales with HP, but they are exceptions. To be more specific, the most important stat is actually your base attack, because that base value scales with all your attack percentage bonuses that you can get from various sources most importantly your weapons and artifacts, but sometimes also talents, constellations and set effects. Your base attack is made up of the character's inherent attack value that only increases through leveling and ascending that character, and your weapon's flat attack stat that only increases through leveling and ascending that weapon. What this means is that character level and weapon level are always going to be the biggest bottlenecks for your damage output in general and should always be your highest priority because they determine your base attack, which is then amplified by the rest of your gear. After attack, the next best thing to focus on to increase your damage is crit rate. Whenever you deal a critical hit, you deal a certain amount of bonus damage on that hit. The higher your crit rate, the more often you get that bonus damage. If your crit chance reaches a reliably high level, you can then work on crit damage, which determines how much more damage you deal on a critical hit. It's usually best to go for a high crit chance first, because otherwise you're not benefiting from the increased crit damage multiplier very consistently. The last major boost to your overall damage comes in the form of physical or elemental damage percentage bonuses. There's only one artifact slot where you can get this type of damage boost as a main stat, and that's the goblet slot. If your character is mostly dealing one type of damage, meaning either physical damage or one type of elemental damage, it is worth getting a goblet artifact that gives you a percent damage bonus to that type of damage as the main stat. Why is it not just better to stick with an attack percent main stat goblet instead? The reason is that you're suffering from diminishing returns the more attack percent bonuses you already have on the rest of your gear. Here's a very quick and simplified example of how that is. Let's say you got yourself Lisa, you have 100 base attack and you get a 50% attack bonus combined from all your weapons and 3 of your 4 artifacts. You're now looking at 150 total attack. Now let's assume you go out and hit a monster with a normal attack and that hit deals 150 electro damage. Now you go back to your artifacts and you try to find a suitable goblet artifact and you're deciding between another 40% attack bonus or a 30% lightning damage bonus. In the first case, you're now looking at a 90% attack bonus on all of your gear and a total attack value of 190. But that's only a 27% increase in damage compared to what you had before, not 40%. In the second case, you're still looking at a total attack value of 150, so nothing really changes in your character's attribute sheet, because this calculation only kicks in when you actually start dealing damage of that certain type. If you hit a monster now, you're getting a 30% bonus for any electro damage that you're dealing. So in this case, not 150 anymore, but 195 instead. You can see that even though the bonus looks smaller on paper, you're actually dealing more damage with the electro artifact because you're suffering from diminishing returns on the attack percent artifact. If you went ahead and stacked lots of electro damage on your character, you'd also at some point suffer from those diminishing returns, but there really aren't that many sources for this type of damage increase. It's primarily just the goblet artifact, so it's almost always worth getting this type of artifact if you can get it and if your character deals mostly that type of damage, and that point is very important. For mages, for example, anything that uses a catalyst, it's very simple. They only deal one type of damage. For Lisa, it's Electro. For Sucrose, it's Anemo, and so on. They aren't capable of dealing any physical damage whatsoever. You'll always want a goblet with the damage percent bonus that corresponds to their element. For any unit that converts their normal attacks into elemental damage, you have a good reason to go for a goblet with that certain type of element damage on it. For Razor, for example, 
it's not that obvious because in the end he still deals mostly physical damage with his ultimate and his wolf only deals electro damage on top of that. So if you went with an electro artifact, only his wolf would really profit from that, not his normal attacks. So maybe here it would be better to simply go for attack percent. A quick word on elemental mastery. This stat does not increase the damage your character deals per se. It only increases the damage dealt through elemental reactions that you trigger with that character. This is especially useful early game where your characters are under leveled, under geared, and elemental reactions make up a big portion of your total damage output. As you progress, it seems to become less important overall, but is still obviously useful. So if you can get it, it's great, but I would say it's not very high on the priority list, at the very least not for your main DPS unit. Energy recharge is just that, you get your energy back faster. If you want it, go for it, otherwise it's not a big priority for damage dealers at least, but more so for support units that assist mainly through their ultimates like Venti or Barbara. That's all we need to know about the stats. Now we need to get into the basics of building a unit. I'm not going to go too much into artifact mechanics in terms of upgrading, what the difference between a main stat and a sub stat is, etc. etc. There are many guides on that out there already. All I will say is that the main stat is always more important than what's in the sub stats. If the main stat doesn't help you, don't waste your resources. The only exceptions are the flower and the feather because those always come with flat HP and flat attack respectively and cannot be changed. The higher in rarity the artifact, the better it is, period. In terms of set effects, artifacts are compatible across different rarities. So you can combine a three star and a four star artifact of the same set with each other and you'll still get the set effect. Many players go for two-piece set effects over four-piece set effects because they're easier to obtain and they give you more flexibility with your builds in general. You have one weapon slot, every weapon only comes with two stats, one being flat attack that counts to your base attack, and a second stat that can be a variety of things. Three stars and above weapons also have a unique effect to them that is very impactful and often influences how you play your character. Then you have your five artifact slots for flower and feather. Since their main stat is fixed, here you go purely by the substats and see whether they're good or not. For the other three slots, all of them can roll attack percent as their main stat. So if you just can't decide what to go for, always go for attack percent if you want damage. It'll always be useful. More specifically, in the Sands of Eon slot, the only really useful main stat that you can get here for a damage dealer is in fact attack percent, so this one is easiest to figure out. In the Goblet slot, you have the aforementioned choice between either attack percent or physical or elemental damage percent. If your character deals mostly one type of damage, choose that specific Goblet, if not, go for attack percent. The last slot is the Circlet, here you have the choice between attack percent crit rate and crit damage. Generally, you only pick crit chance if your attack is decently high already and you only go for crit damage if your crit rate is decently high already. If you're not sure, pick attack percent. Now let's finally get into Kirching herself. Here's what you need to know about Kirching. She's an electro unit that uses a sword. That means by default, her elemental skills deal electro damage, her normal and charged attacks physical damage. What's special about her is that you have the option of converting your normal attacks into electro attacks by reactivating your E ability, which results in this teleport. After that, as indicated by the purple glow around your sword, your basic attacks deal electro damage for the next 5 seconds. This ability has a cooldown of only 7.5 seconds, meaning that if you time everything well, you could be dealing electro damage most of the time. The alternative is that you explode this dagger that you're throwing out with your E ability instead of teleporting to it. That way you also get a little burst of damage, but your attacks stay physical. This alone already opens up two major paths for building her. You could build her either for maximum electro damage or for maximum physical damage where you mainly use normal and charged attacks because she has one of the fastest attack patterns out there right now. The other thing about her is that her fourth stat is crit damage. If you don't know what a fourth stat is, it's the bonus stat that you get every time you ascend a certain character to the next phase. This stat is different for every unit. For Fischl it's attack for example, for Barbara it's HP and so on. Kirtin gets crit damage. This tells you that unless you build at least some crit rate on her, 
you're wasting this crit damage that you're getting basically just for free for leveling and ascending her. So you definitely want crit rate on her and then either physical damage or electro damage. The way I have her build right now is as a physical DPS unit. I gave her the battle pass sword that gives a decent chunk of crit rate to make better use of her naturally high crit damage. Its unique effect also gives her normal and charged attacks a 20% damage bonus, which is perfect for just that, a physical DPS build. For the flower, I just went with something that had nice offensive substats. The most important being attack percent, then crit rate, then crit damage, then flat attack, then elemental mastery, and then all the rest. Energy recharge is cool, but personally I don't think she struggles with energy at all. For the feather, I again went with something that had okay substats. Here I have three that are somewhat useful. For the Sands of Eon slot, I really need a better artifact, but I can't seem to get any with attack percent as a main stat with usable substats. For now, I just have this three star one, only plus eight for some attack percent until I get something more useful. I went for a physical damage goblet with only two really useful substats. Didn't roll that well either, but this is just what I had, so I went with it. For the last slot, I chose crit damage. This may be the most questionable piece of gear on this unit so far, because even with all the crit rate I get from the sword, from the set effect, and from all the substats together, I'm still only at a 50% crit rate, which makes this damage bonus here not very consistent. So maybe attack percent would be the better option here. As soon as I can get her to the next phase, she unlocks her next passive ability. And this one gives her another 15% crit rate for 8 seconds whenever she casts her ultimate. So with that in mind, this crit damage piece is actually looking much better already. And that's actually already it. No 5 star artifacts or anything yet, but this build is particularly good for boss hunting where you have only one target that you can go crazy on with your charged attacks. The reason I chose this build over full Electro right now is because I don't have an Electro Goblet and because it helps me deal with all bosses equally well. Because no boss is completely immune to physical damage. If you wanted to make her full Electro though, all you'd have to do is exchange this Goblet for an Electro Goblet and change your playstyle accordingly. Or you could simply stay hybrid and go for the normal attack percent bonus. That way you're not committing too much to either one side and you just stay more flexible in general. I do think that in the very late game she's probably best used as a pure electro carry because of her constellations, especially the last one that gives her a huge electro damage buff, but realistically that's not in reach for most of us. Right now she's also my only main carry and until I start building other dedicated main carries for different elements, I think it is best to have her on a more physical build that does well against every type of enemy. Anyway, I think that's already it for this video. If you have any questions, feedback, advice, as always, leave it in the comments and stay tuned for more.